both the 1995 Pontiac Sunfire and Chevrolet Cavalier are all new, with many outstanding features and advanced engineering for impressive value. One of the most impressive offerings is the new Hydromatic 4T40E automatic transaxle, another example of GM's leadership in electronically controlled transmissions and transaxles. The 4T40E is only available on Sunfire and Cavalier with the 2.3-liter Quad 4 engine. Both the Quad 4 engine and the 4T40E transaxle are operated by the powertrain control module, or PCM. Also, this drivetrain conforms to OBD2 emission standards. OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics, and 2 identifies it as the second generation. In this CPT presentation, we'll look at the 4T40E. After a quick overview, we'll concentrate on some important customer enthusiasm issues, followed by components, operation, and diagnosis. We'll also review some service procedure highlights. To help provide product feedback to GM Powertrain, the 4T40E will have an exchange program initially, followed by on-vehicle service. In the 1995 model year, the 4T40E will be serviced by full replacement. In 1996, limited on-car service will be authorized. Many of these items will be covered at the end of this presentation. Beginning in the 1997 model year, full service by technicians will occur. Also note that the 4T40E does not have a fluid fill indicator, and it uses a new Dexron 3 ATF, as do all hydromatic units for the 1995 model year. The 4T40E should not require a fluid change for life under normal service. If the unit is used under severe service, a fluid change is recommended at 50,000 miles. Regarding fluid, the level is checked at the plug under the stub shaft. With the vehicle level, running and warm, fluid should be even with the opening. Do not overfill, as it may affect performance and damage the unit. The complete fluid level service procedure is detailed in the course book accompanying this video. The 4T40E is similar to other hydromatic units. The torque converter features a torque converter clutch. Below the bottom pan, there is an intermediate fourth servo and low reverse servo to apply the corresponding bands. The 4T40E uses a variable capacity vein type oil pump. The control valve body assembly houses the shift valves and several of the electronic components. Input power is transferred to the gear sets and output shaft via the drive link assembly. The 4T40E features five multiple disc clutches and three mechanical one-way clutches. The intermediate fourth band is positioned over the reverse input clutch housing. The housing is splined to the multiple disc second clutch, which is splined to the one-way second roller clutch. The reaction carrier assembly mates to the direct and coast clutch assembly. Both are multiple disc. Inside, you'll find the direct clutch, the coast clutch, and the input sprag. The direct and coast clutches are multiple disc, and the sprag is a one-way mechanical clutch. The multiple disc forward clutch houses the input and reaction carriers. And we should note that Unlike other transaxles, the reaction carrier is actually positioned before the input carrier on the 4T40E. The forward clutch rides inside the low reverse band. These are followed by the forward clutch support assembly, which contains the low roller mechanical clutch and the parking prowl. Just as the mechanical hydraulic components are familiar, so are the electronic devices. The 6SU powertrain control module, or PCM, controls both the transaxle and the engine. 
Transaxle control is accomplished as part of an OBD2 compliant engine management system. Another CPT course, OBD2 features, should be used to help you understand the new engine management system. For electronic control, the 4T40E features a pressure switch assembly, a 1-2 shift solenoid labeled solenoid A, a 2-3 shift solenoid called B, a pressure control solenoid, a TCC control solenoid, an input speed sensor, and an output speed sensor, which is the vehicle speed sensor or VSS. The pressure switch assembly or PSA is attached to the valve body and provides inputs to the PCM. First of all, it contains six fluid pressure switches. Five of the switches are used in combination to identify manual valve position and therefore the driver selected gear range. The sixth switch identifies TCC status. The PSA also contains the transaxle temperature sensor. The temperature sensor is a thermistor that monitors mainline fluid. The PCM can modify shift schedules and TCC apply to help control fluid temperature. The input speed sensor is also an internal transaxle input. The input speed sensor identifies turbine speed, which is the input speed signal for the PCM. Inputs include the vehicle speed sensor, which is mounted at the differential end of the case. Like the input speed sensor, the vehicle speed sensor is a magnetic inductive pickup. The vehicle speed sensor identifies output and vehicle speed for the PCM. While several components of the engine management system are inputs for shift decisions, the throttle position, or TP sensor, is very important. The PCM uses throttle position to determine shift patterns and TCC. The engine coolant temperature, or ECT, sensor is also an important input. Engine temperature is a critical parameter for initial TCC apply. The manifold absolute pressure, or MAP sensor, is also used by the PCM for transaxle-related decisions. The MAP sensor relates to engine load and speed and is used to adjust line pressure and shift patterns. The transaxle pressure control solenoid is a PCM output and acts as a pressure regulator to control line pressure. This relates to the transaxle's adapt function which uses line pressure to continuously adapt and therefore compensate for normal component wear and customer driving habits. The TCC solenoid is also in the valve body and controls the apply and release of the torque converter clutch. Like the pressure control solenoid, the TCC solenoid is pulse width modulated. The two shift solenoids, on the other hand, are on-off solenoids. Both are normally open and control upshifts and downshifts in all forward gear ranges. Two solenoids with two states, on and off, lets the PCM provide four forward gears and reverse. Before viewing the electronic operation of the 4T40E, here's a brief look at some basic fluid circuits and power flow through the mechanical components. We'll begin in park with the engine running. Here, fluid is drawn into the oil pump. The resulting line pressure goes to the pressure regulator valve for distribution in the transaxle. Although the manual valve is in the park position, the low reverse band is applied to prepare for movement. When the selector goes to reverse, the manual valve moves to the reverse position and the reverse clutch applies. The low reverse band remains applied. Upon a shift to neutral, the manual valve goes to the neutral position, which exhausts line pressure at the reverse clutch to release it. When the selector is moved to overdrive, the manual valve directs line pressure to the drive fluid circuit. This releases the low reverse band and applies the forward clutch. 
power is delivered to the drive wheels at a 2.96 to 1 ratio. Both the input sprag clutch and low roller clutch are holding. As vehicle speed increases, the PCM commands the 1-2 shift solenoid off, causing the 1-2 shift valve upshift. This applies the second clutch for a 1.62 to 1 ratio. The second roller clutch is holding along with the input sprag clutch. However, the low roller clutch now begins overrunning. For third gear, the 2-3 shift solenoid is commanded on for the 2-3 upshift. The 2-3 shift valve routes fluid to apply the direct clutch for a 1 to 1 ratio. At this point, the second roller clutch begins to overrun. The PCM then commands the 1-2 shift solenoid back on and fourth gear results from the 3-4 shift valve which routes fluid to apply the intermediate fourth band. The overdrive ratio is 0.68 to 1. The TCC is engaged when the PCM energizes the pulse width modulated control solenoid allowing fluid to be routed through the regulated apply valve. This TCC is not applied until fourth gear. These shifts are initiated by the PCM controlled solenoids. In addition, the control module uses the pressure control solenoid to optimize shift feel. Both shift solenoids are identical. They work in combination to provide the four forward gear ranges. The solenoids are normally open exhaust valves. When energized, the fluid is held. The solenoids control 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 4 shift valve position. In park, reverse, and neutral, the 1, 2 shift solenoid A is on and therefore holding fluid, while the 2, 3 shift solenoid B is off and exhausting fluid. This is also true for first gear. In second gear, A is turned off to exhaust fluid and B remains off. For third gear, B turns on. And for fourth gear, both solenoids are on. Both solenoids receive voltage anytime the ignition is on. They are energized when the PCM provides a ground. The TCC solenoid is normally closed and is pulse width modulated at a frequency of 42 Hertz. With pulse width modulation, the PCM can ramp up the duty cycle for smooth TCC apply and ramp down for smooth release. Release is also pulse width modulated but ramps down at a much quicker rate. The PCM releases the TCC any time it senses the brakes are applied via the brake switch. The pressure control solenoid or PCS is the other pulse width modulated solenoid. The PCM controls the PCS on a positive duty cycle of 614 Hertz. As the percent of current on time from the PCM increases, the PCS decreases line pressure. This is because as current increases, the solenoid's plunger moves farther from the unit's exhaust port. The PCM controls line pressure to compensate for various driving conditions and normal wear of components, clutch fiber plates, seals, springs, etc. Upshift Adapt maintains a set shift feel via the PCS. The PCM compares the input and output speed sensors during commanded shifts to identify any shifts which appear to be too fast or too slow, in other words, too harsh or too soft. Several inputs are used by the PCM to control transaxle operation. The transaxle fluid pressure switch assembly, or PSA, contains two, the pressure switches and the transaxle temperature sensor. There are six pressure switches in the PSA. Five are normally open and identify manual valve position for the PCM. The sixth switch is normally closed and relates to TCC operation. The PCM supplies a voltage feed to the shift-related pressure switches. When fluid pressure from the manual valve position is applied to a switch, it closes and the PCM detects a grounded signal. 
Various combinations of opens and grounds identify the driver selected gear range. The PCM uses pressure switch information to control line pressure as well as the TCC and shift solenoids. If the PCM recognizes an incorrect switch combination or a combination which conflicts with other sensor data, a diagnostic trouble code or DTC is set. The normally closed TCC release pressure switch opens when TCC release fluid is supplied. The PCM uses this open as a signal that the TCC is actually off when commanded. If the PSA pressure switches provide the PCM with incorrect inputs, shifts and TCC apply can be affected. The PSA transaxle temperature sensor does exactly what its name implies. The PCM supplies a 5 volt reference signal to the temperature sensor. As temperature rises, resistance is lower and vice versa. At 140 degrees centigrade or 284 degrees Fahrenheit, the PCM goes into hot mode operation. Above this temperature, the PCM applies the TCC at all times in third and fourth gears and commands early 2, 3 and 3, 4 upshifts to reduce fluid temperatures. Both the input and vehicle speed sensors are magnetic inductive pickups. The input speed sensor reacts to the teeth on the drive sprocket. The vehicle speed sensor rotor is pressed onto the differential carrier. In either case, the teeth rotate past the sensor's magnetic pickup to induce an AC signal. Higher speeds induce both a higher frequency and voltage. Input speed is used by the PCM for control of line pressure and speed calculations. The output or vehicle speed sensor is used to adjust TCC apply pressure and timing, line pressure and shift timing, as well as engine management functions. Incorrect speed sensor signals could result in incorrect shifts and TCC apply. The throttle position, or TP sensor, is used by the PCM to determine driver requested throttle position. For transaxle operation, this influences shift patterns and TCC function. The PCM supplies a 5 volt reference signal and a ground to the TP sensor. The sensor signal is the 5 volt reference after it has been altered by the sensor's rheostat. A faulty TP input could cause erratic or incorrect shifts and TCC functions. The manifold absolute pressure or MAP sensor identifies pressure in the intake manifold for the PCM. The PCM uses this to determine engine load and speed. The MAP sensor uses a three-wire circuit like the TP sensor. With the MAP, the five-volt reference signal is altered by manifold vacuum acting on the sensor. The higher the vacuum, the lower the signal voltage, indicating a low engine load. The PCM uses MAP to adjust line pressure and shift patterns. Incorrect MAP values can alter shift patterns and feel. The engine coolant temperature, or ECT sensor, is used by the PCM to determine initial TCC engagement. The ECT uses a two-wire circuit for a five-volt reference and ground. The PCM determines coolant temperature by sensing the voltage drop on the reference line. The cruise control system is part of the engine management system. Whenever cruise is on, the PCM alters shift patterns to reduce the number of 3-4 upshifts and 4-3 downshifts for consistent cruising speeds. The 4T40E electronic transaxle requires an organized approach for diagnosis. Armed with an accurate and detailed understanding of the customer's concern, always remember that the unit requires all electronic, mechanical, as well as hydraulic functions to operate correctly. The strategy-based diagnostic procedure is a uniform approach to repair all GM electrical or electronic vehicle systems including the 4T40E. This approach is a logical, problem-solving strategy 
that has been developed to increase your effectiveness in fixing a vehicle right the first time. It is also important to remember the transaxle has a fail-safe mode when a portion of the electronic control system becomes disabled. In fail-safe, the PCS is commanded off for maximum line pressure to ensure band and clutch slippage is minimized. The TCC is also commanded off to prevent TCC apply. Furthermore, since both shift solenoids are also commanded off, the unit will be in second gear. Park, reverse, and neutral will still be available, however. With the condition understood, 4T40E diagnosis must begin with the functional check procedure. Skipping steps and jumping to conclusions will typically result in customer frustration and comebacks. The first step is to perform an onboard diagnostic system check to verify controller communications is reliable. If the system check identifies a communications fault as well as any current or history DTCs, diagnose these conditions before proceeding. Use Service Manual Supplement Section 7 or, if necessary, 6E3. When faced with multiple DTCs, always start with the lowest number code. 4T40E equipped Cavaliers and Sunfires use an OBD2 engine management system. That means the DTCs will have a five-digit designator. The P means it's a powertrain code. The O means this code is generic to all auto manufacturers. The 7 identifies that the code is transmission related. The 12 identifies the actual code. In this case, it's fluid temperature circuit low. Also related to OBD2 is the fact that the malfunction indicator lamp, or MIL, does not necessarily come on when a DTC is in the PCM's memory. Therefore, scan tool usage is particularly important. The new Tech 2 or a Tech 1 scan tool, along with a currently updated mass storage cartridge and a vehicle interface module, or VIM, are truly essential tools. A variety of menu options are available for use with strategy-based diagnostics if the system check suggests. Let's briefly review how each can be used by the transmission technician before continuing on with the functional check. With the Tech 1, all of the VIM must be used. If you have a Tech 1A, the DLC adapter is disconnected from the VIM. From the Select Mode menu, push F0 to view data lists. Here you can see the engine-related inputs, such as TP, MAP, and ECT, as well as the status of the trans inputs and outputs, such as the PCS, fluid temperature sensor, and shift solenoids. F1 is for capture information regarding OBD2 emission-related components. It will probably not be used when diagnosing a transmission-only related condition. On the other hand, F2 displays all DTCs stored in the PCM. 20 codes directly relate to the 4T40E transaxle. While the course book for this CPT video has a description of each, be sure to always check the latest available service information for any changes or updates. F3 from the Select Mode menu allows you to take snapshots that are manually or automatically triggered. This can be very helpful on a road test. The miscellaneous output tests available in F4 from the Select Mode menu allow you to initiate output actions to verify that the PCM can control them. However, if the system check reveals no DTCs, the transmission functional test continues with the fluid checking procedure. As shown earlier, the fluid should be level with the fill hole for the oil level screw. In addition, check fluid condition. Traditional diagnostic techniques, such as burnt fluid, apply. If the fluid is okay, you must verify the customer complaint. Two tests are used, the electrical garage shift test and the road test. Here are the highlights of both. The electrical garage shift test is used to verify electronic inputs and outputs. 
In fact, identifying a simple electrical condition can save a ton of major transmission diagnosis. First, view and verify that the transmission-related inputs and outputs are reading in range. A complete list is in the service manual. Then, watch the inputs change to verify the PCM sees the changes in status. When the brake pedal is depressed, the brake switch should be open. Take your foot off and the Tech 1 should show the switch is closed. Move the Prindle through all the ranges. Verify Tech 1 status matches the range selected. Also, be sure gear selections are immediate and not harsh. Then, with the transmission in neutral, view throttle angle as you press the accelerator. If the garage shift test checks OK, a road test is necessary. Leave the scan tool connected. Be sure the road test is performed in a safe area where road and traffic conditions are acceptable, and follow all traffic safety laws. Set the scan tool to pair throttle angle with vehicle speed. Use the service manual's shift speed chart to select a throttle angle speed combination for the road you're using. Note the speed of each of the shift points. If a condition is evident, you have several diagnostic options. Use the Tech 1 to check for any DTCs. Perhaps the snapshot option can identify the root cause. Or checking the electrical connections back in the stall is in order. Also, the range reference chart can be used to identify a suspected common component when a fault occurs in more than one range. While the functional test has specific directions for each type of condition, harsh or soft shifts suggest the pressure check procedure. Connect the pressure gauge at the line pressure tap. Follow the service manual specifications and use the Tech 1 PCS control test to manipulate line pressure. Using one-tenth amp increments, verify line pressure control by comparing your reading with the service manual chart. However, there are several items to note. To avoid damage, the test cannot exceed two minutes. You are strongly cautioned to ensure the brakes are applied at all times. The Tech 1 PCS control is only available in park and neutral. Also, monitor fluid temperature as line pressure drops when temperature increases. A final topic for diagnosis involves the J39200 digital volt ohmmeter and jumper harness J39775. Not only can they be used for volt, ohm, and amperage readings, but you can also read duty cycle at the pulse width modulated solenoids and the min-max feature is especially helpful for intermittents. For example, manipulate the harness and see if the min-max feature identifies an intermittent short or open. Remember that many faults will set a DTC in the PCM, but some do not. That's why strategy-based diagnostics must be used to make the most of your time and the customers. As mentioned in the introduction, the 4T40E will have limited service initially. In the 1995 model year, the 4T40E will be serviced by full replacement. In 1996, limited on-car service will be authorized. Beginning in the 1997 model year, full service by technicians will occur. Here's a review of some of the service highlights for the 1996 model year limited service program. We'll do all the procedures on the bench to aid photography using fixtures J41230 and J3289-20. First of all, the 4T40E is assembled with self-threading fasteners. Self-threading fasteners are a dark gray-black color, whereas service fasteners are either gray or gold yellow. External fasteners are gray. Internal fasteners are gold yellow. The self-threading fasteners can be reused if undamaged. Otherwise, use a service fastener which is typically four millimeters shorter. 
Furthermore, always clean the self-threaded bolt holes of any debris created by the previous threading process. Also, do not use air tools on the self-threading fasteners because this will damage the leading threads. This is also why these fasteners must be hand started. The side cover is secured by 10 bolts and one stud. Under the side cover, you'll find two gaskets. Also, remove the case cover to driven support thrust washer at this time. Removal of the output shaft sleeve requires puller J41227. The tool's legs are positioned under the sleeve. The output shaft sleeve should not be reused. There are two special notes to be made here. First, both the side cover axle seal and output shaft sleeve should be replaced whenever a leak in this area is identified. Second, the output shaft can be removed only with the final drive assembly as part of a complete disassembly. For the control valve assembly electronic components, first, disconnect the harness connectors. Next, remove the six bolts that retain the pressure switch to the control valve assembly. When you remove the pressure switch from the control valve assembly, the seven O-rings for the pressure switch should come with it. If undamaged, they can be reused. At the differential end of the case, stub shaft removal begins with the snap ring, which is not reusable. However, the stub shaft sleeve is reusable if undamaged. You'll need to attach slide hammer J6125 to the J38868 shaft remover. The remover tool is positioned on the shaft snap ring groove and tightened securely. After you're sure the snap ring is seated in the differential side gear, use the slide hammer to remove the shaft. The stub shaft sleeve is removed with the J41227 puller we used earlier. If there is evidence of a leak, both the seal and sleeve should be replaced. The 4T40E cooler line seals feature a new procedure compared to previous models. A new tool, the cooler line seal remover J41239-2 is used. Slide the tool's groove into the outer lip of the seal and press it out. Installing a new line seal requires installer J41239-1. Use the line's bracket bolt hole to install the tool. At the bottom oil pan, 12 bolts hold the oil pan to the case. The gasket is reusable. Also, clean the pan's magnet if necessary. The filter assembly and its seal are removed next. When removing the seal, be careful not to score the case. In addition, the seal should not be reused. To remove the oil level control valve, lift straight up at the locking tabs. Do not try to pry it out. The oil feed pipe assembly is secured by four bolts. It is important to note that the feed pipe seal rings are glued in place. They should remain with the assembly and are reusable. A final service note concerns the servos. Both the intermediate fourth and low reverse servos are positioned under case-mounted covers that are secured with three bolts each. Inside, you'll find the servo piston assembly and return spring. Both the 1995 Pontiac Sunfire and Chevrolet Cavalier offer many outstanding features and advanced engineering. Either can be equipped with the new Hydromatic 4T40E automatic transaxle, Another example of GM's leadership in electronically controlled transmissions and transaxles. While this new transaxle features low maintenance, durability, and electronic adaptive shifting, one of its strongest selling points is the army of fully trained Chevrolet and Pontiac service technicians. Customers depend on you to fix it right the first time, every time. You should now prepare to take the test for this course. To take the test, you'll need a number two pencil and the official student attendance and test form in front of you. Make sure that the seven digits of the course number printed in block nine of the form 
match the seven digits of the course number printed on the course book and the videotape label. Start with the attendance and test form in front of you with a clipped corner in the lower right. This is the only answer sheet you'll need for this course. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a series of circles under the letters A through E. When you've decided on an answer, completely fill in the circle under the letter that matches the letter of your answer. Since your test will be checked by computer, avoid making any stray marks on the form. If you change your mind, completely erase your old answer before marking your new answer. Also, it's important not to get dirt or grease on or to fold the answer sheet. Any of these conditions could cause the computer to incorrectly check your test. As you take this test, remember, there's no time limit. Please complete the sections of the student attendance and test form which identify you and your dealership. If this part of the form is not filled out correctly, you and your dealership won't receive proper credit or certification for this course. Start by placing the form in front of you with a clipped corner in the upper right. In the upper left-hand corner, print your last name in block one. Only one letter goes in each box. Print your first and middle initial in block two. Print the name of your dealership in block three. Your dealership city in block four. And the official postal abbreviation for your dealership state in block five. Your social security number goes in block six. Enter your dealer code in the space provided. Put today's date in block eight. Back at block one, you'll see an alphabet under each letter of your name. Completely fill in the circle of the letter that matches the letter that you printed at the top of the column. Follow the same steps for your initials and for the digits of your social security number, the date, and your dealer code. Once you have completed all of the parts of the test, make a photocopy of the form for your records. After copying, put the original in the pre-addressed envelope. No postage is needed. Good luck. To inquire about CPT test scores and to order additional copies of test materials, call 1-800-468-6657. Please have your dealer code and course number handy when you call.